Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic. Let's do it. Serious. What is the most supernatural or creepy type feeling you've ever had? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. When I was in my early teens, me, my mother, and my younger brother lived in a haunted house. It's kind of complicated to explain the layout, but it was a big old house in poor condition that had been split into three apartments. We rented the whole house. The upper apartment wasn't habitable. It was stripped to the studs and the kitchen and bath were never finished. We used it as storage. You could go up there on a summer day with sunshine streaming through the windows and feel uneasy, as someone might feel walking a graveyard at midnight. Being in there just made my hair stand on end. I won't even talk about the basement. It really freaked me out. So anyway, we always felt like the place was creepy, and coincidentally, we had some really hard times for our family while we lived there. So here's where it gets a little deeper. Long after we had moved, my mother was at a dinner party at a friend's house. There was a couple there who were mutual friends of the host. My mother had met them briefly years before, but didn't really know them well. They had moved away and were back in town for a short visit. While dinner was being prepared, my mother was chatting with the man, making small talk. She asked where they had lived when they were in town. When the man replied with the neighborhood, my mother said, we live in that area too. When he went further, naming the street, she replied, really? Us too. When he gave the address, wow, that's something, we lived in the same house. The man looked kind of sad and serious and said, we have some bad memories of that place. He explained that very late one night, there was a banging at the front door. His wife, who was very pregnant, rushed downstairs to answer, but as she did, she misstepped and fell down the stairs. When she got to the door, there was nobody there. As a result of the fall, she lost the baby. It was then that my mother remembered. One night, my brother, who was maybe seven or eight, came into her room crying after having a terrible nightmare. She has said that he was terrified. When he finally calmed down, she asked what the nightmare was about. Still sniffling, he said, there's something in the house, and it wants children. If that's not enough, the next house next door burned down. Years later on the same block, a woman's body was found buried in a backyard, and there was a gruesome double murder of two sisters about five doors away. The whole block is cursed. Me and my little sister shared a dream. In the dream, we were on an outdoor trip with our gym or chess club, Mr. Michi, we would all climb up this big grassy cliff and jump off the edge. We would hit the bottom, climb back up and jump again. After a while, Mr. Michi jumped, but he never came back up. We woke up after that. She was talking about this dream the next morning when I realized we both had the exact same dream. The next time we were at school during morning announcements, we had a moment of silence for Mr. Michi. He had died from a head injury playing basketball with another teacher the Friday before. Apparently, he had fallen backwards and his head bounced or something, causing him to die. It's not the first or last time I've had premonitions about life or death, but it was the first that I shared with a sibling, and the most shocking. He was pretty young and in good health before this. I have a few, but the weirdest was my great-grandma. There's this back bedroom in my parents' house. It was my oldest uncle's room when he was younger. Then as the family grew, he moved rooms and my mom and aunt shared it. I absolutely feared that room as a kid. And I was telling my mom about it after my grandpa passed away. I always felt like someone was going to slam the door shut as I was opening it. And the closet gave me the creeps when I needed to get anything from it. My grandma used to always say I had a night terror in there when I was nearly two screaming out, Mommy, Daddy, Baby, Grandma. After I told my mom all this, she said she had been talking to my uncle, and somehow that room got brought up. He told her he remembered waking up once to the feeling that something was on his chest, and when he opened his eyes, he saw my very dead great-grandma holding him down. I always imagined the one holding the door to be slightly crazed older woman. She had lived with my grandparents when she was older and had died in that house as did my grandparents eventually. I'd say they kept her in check, but 
Grandma was pretty ornery herself. When I was younger, I shared a room with my older brother. We both slept on a bunk bed. I was on top and he was on bottom since he was much older at the time. One night around 12 on a weekend, we were both in bed. He was asleep. I was awake reading a book under the covers and suddenly I had to piss. So I climbed out of my bed, went to my mom in the living room, drinking red wine and watching TV, and I let her know I was going to the bathroom. Anyways, I took my piss all good. I went back to the living room, said goodnight to my mom, and went down the hallway to enter my room. Something I need to add is the layout of my room, so basically the bunk bed was against the window, and that window had metal blinds. You know the ones that are like really loud when they move? I enter the room, and I see something on top of my older brother looking out the window. It was a tall, lanky, super white, almost translucent skinned creature. Keep in mind, there were no lights on in my room. I could only see the silhouette, and its finger was bending the metal blind down looking outside, and I saw the light from the street light outside going through the window onto its finger, and I could see the veins and joints on the index finger at that point. I was screaming and crying, and ran to my mom, and she was super confused, went to the room, and nothing was there. My brother didn't even wake from my screams. The one thing I remember the most vividly is that as I was screaming, I could hear the finger lift off the blinds and make the metallic noise. Anyway. That's my first encounter with that thing, and I have one other as well, but this already took me ages to write. If anyone has questions or knows anything about a creature that kind of fits that description, let me know. By the way, my mother can still vouch this happened. She doesn't like when I talk about it. It was an effed up night. I have identical twin sons. When they were three, I had to make a six hour round trip drive, and I had to take them with me. They slept for most of the drive. And on our way home, I decided I should wake them up to go to the bathroom. I stopped at a rest stop and turned around to wake them up. Before I said a word, they both opened their eyes at the same time and started talking in perfect unison. They said to me, Dad, we should tell you about the dream we just had. We were driving down the highway and we saw three piles of bones. One was me, one was my bubba, and one was my full name. Then they closed their eyes and slept for the rest of the ride home. This happened six years ago, and recounting it still creeps me out. Were we going to crash and die that day? I'm not 100% sure they even knew my full name. I was data to them. About three years ago, my city was hit by what was for us a major snowfall and ground to a halt. The preschool I worked at closed, unpaid, thanks capitalism, but I was making money off of babysitting for my parents who were still going to work. They were from Chicago. They laughed at us. So I was spending all day for a week and a half in 100 plus year old home, alone with a baby and two dogs. Baby cried, unless he was being held, so I would usually strap him on me with the carrier, put on a podcast and putz around. The house always gave me vibes, and I absolutely hated putting the baby down in his crib, thus turning my back on his creepy, long, thin attic closet that never quite stayed closed and made you feel watched, but other than feelings and random creaks, old house, nothing actually happened. Until one morning, when I was heading down to the finished basement to refill the dog food container. The baby was strapped on as usual, I wasn't rushing or in socks, the basement didn't freak me out like the upstairs did to be honest, and I felt a hand push me in the small of my back. I fell or skidded down the stairs on my back and landed on my butt, sore and terrified that I had almost squished the baby. The baby was fine, but screaming his head off. I booked it upstairs, and the baby napped in the living room with me for the rest of the week. I sat for them once or twice more, hated the feeling in that house. Also, they had no good snacks, and gave the job to my friend. She has a horrifying story involving the baby's eventual little brother, and a door shaking from inside an empty room, but that's for another day. I lost my brother, who was 20 at the time, to suicide when I was 7 years old. He went pretty crazy before it happened and would threaten and abuse my older sister, 17 at the time. My brother actually snuck into our home twice and caught her both times before he could get to her. He was very open about wanting to kill her, well, a couple of years after my brother passed. While laying in bed with my sister on the brink of sleep, 
We both heard the door creak. I look over and see my late brother on all fours, crawling to the side of the bed my sister was on. She screamed for him to leave, and he crawled back out. She squeezed onto me, and we didn't move the entire night. It was an awful experience, and messed with me pretty badly. For years, she and I slept in the same bed with the door locked. We have always openly talked about it, and the family is doing much better. Sorry for the awful English. P.S. My parents had me in their 40s, wondering about their insane age difference. When I was eight, I lived in Arizona in some apartments near the center of Phoenix. I had woken up from the air mattress in the living room as we had recently moved in. When I woke up, I was headed to one of the rooms where some things to pass the time were. On my way to the room, there was a small hallway, and in the hallway I found a penny on the floor. I go down to pick it up, and as I raise my head, I see a little girl in a dress no younger than four. When I looked at her, she ran into the room. I was headed to, but when she did, the door was already opened and previously wasn't. My curious younger self follows her as she waits for me at the back of the room next to a bathroom inside the room. Again, when she sees me, she runs into the room. I hurry up to try and catch her, but when I go into the bathroom, there are no one there, and the lights turn on without me touching the light switch. This was a very small bathroom, and the room had nothing in it. This happened to my mom and grandma, not to me directly, as I was a baby at the time. I'm from a Southeast European country. My dad used to work in the West and visit us during the summer. Lots of black magic effery had been practiced since that time. However, my dad was visiting and about to leave that evening. Family has come together to say goodbye. Meanwhile, on the upper floor, which was locked, my mom had prepared some sheets of thin rolled out dough and let them dry on a larger surface. So my dad left and a little later, my mom went upstairs to get something switching the light on in that certain room to then see blood sprinkled over the dough. I'd have freaked out by that point, as no one was upstairs the whole time, according to mom and grandma. However, the half-dried sheets were given to our cows the next day. I know it sounds stupid to do it, but throwing away food, especially bready stuff, has been seen as a sin in my family. Leftovers were given to our animals as far as possible. The outcome was that none of the cows ever got pregnant again. This story still gives me shivers to this day, and I have an uncomfortable feeling sleeping in that house when I'm there visiting. My childhood home was haunted, and my sister and I really only found out toward the end. The house always used to terrify me, but my mother discouraged us from talking about it. In the months leading up to our move, she confided in us that she always thought it was haunted. But she couldn't afford to move us until now. LOL. Thanks, Mom. The closer we got to the move, the wilder shit got. And rather than individually effing with us, it started to eff with us collectively. So we'd all be having dinner, and suddenly all the cupboards would open in front of everyone. We'd hear footsteps, as if someone were running through the house. But there was no one. Things would fly off shelves and tables, again, in front of all of us, and sometimes guests. It feels surreal to have ever lived there. I'm sure there's a logical explanation for all of it, but I think it's funnier to pretend that I have a poltergeist. The first time he appeared was when I was 18, and I had a ring I would wear 24-7, even in bed. I was scheduled to move to London for a year, and the morning of my flight, I got up and the ring was gone. I looked everywhere but couldn't find it. I was 100% certain I'd worn it to bed. I even had a random selfie from the night before where you could see I had it. I flew over to London without that ring and started getting settled in. As I unpacked some boxes that I'd sent over there several weeks prior, the ring I lost suddenly dropped in front of my feet. I don't know where it came from. I didn't send it with the box and most certainly didn't have it on me when I flew over. I'd have several more strange things happen to my rings over the time I was in London like they'd disappear and reappear at random in places where I'd never left them. A friend suggested that they might be a poltergeist trying to propose to me, and somehow that idea or joke stuck. By now I accepted my fate that I have a poltergeist, and even named him Toby. 
By now, he turns on my TV sometimes, as well as my PlayStation, makes my radiators rumble, does some weird rhythmic pounding at one of my walls, it's not my neighbor's, I asked, and sometimes makes a picture fall down my wall. He laid off with the rings, though. Maybe the ring was afraid of flying, or maybe it fell off in your cuff, and I don't know, but cool story, pretty wild. When I was 15 years old, I had a depression diagnosis from a psychotherapist, so she gave me a recipe for pills, and that shit was too heavy. It started getting worse for my mental health and had hallucinations all the time while using that shit. So one time when I was asleep, in that dream, I knew that I was sleeping. I was in my room and ahead of me near the wall was an effing two and a half meter creator that looked like a 12 year old girl and a pyramid head from Silent Hill at the same time. And in one moment when I said, I'm just asleep in my head, I realized that I wasn't dreaming. That shit really happened. After this realization, all is gone, and I felt totally calm and fell asleep. Next morning, I dropped pills and decided to look for another therapist. After many years, I'm happy about that decision. A couple of years ago, I moved into an apartment complex that I basically noped right out of ASAP. It was fine for a day, but when I went and got my dog my second night there, he bolted out of the car as soon as I opened the door and took off toward the alley between my building and the one beside it barking and growling. It was like he was trying to attack something, but he didn't know where to grab it. He was barking and growling and lunging in a general direction, not at anything in particular. It was pitch dark, but I couldn't see or hear anything, so I was a little freaked out. What scared me even more than his behavior was the fact that he was even doing it. He's a borzoi, and they're famous for being extremely docile and calm. He never barks, let alone shows aggression. It took me a minute to calm him down, and I brought him inside. But he absolutely hated whatever he was seeing, and wouldn't turn his back on it the entire walk into the building. He spent the rest of the night growling and barking at one of my bedroom walls, even waking up from a sound sleep to dash over to it like something was there. Eventually, I peeked out the window, to see if something was outside, but there was nothing there. My heart sank when I realized that the bedroom wall he was angry at was the one that overlooked the alley he'd been barking at. A couple of weeks later, I had a friend drop by to pick something up, and as I walked down my building's hall to my door, she asked if anyone had died there. I thought she was making a joke about the complex being in the ghetto, so I laughed it off and said something like, not that I know of, but I wouldn't doubt it. Not long after that, I was pulling into the complex from work one night. My building was at the end of a street, so you basically just turned onto the street, kept driving straight, and you'd land directly in my parking spot. As I got closer to my building, I saw a dark figure come out of the dark alley that my dog had been barking at and slowly walk across the front of the building. At first I thought it was a person dressed in all black, but the closer I got, the more my blood ran cold. It wasn't a person. It didn't have clothes or discernible features. It was more like a naked person was bathed in Vanta black and had a pitch black aura around them. Even my aftermarket HID headlights couldn't illuminate the figure enough to show it was wearing clothes or had a face. I was close enough to hit it with my car if I wanted to. It had no face and its skin was so black it had no dimension to it. It was like a black hole, shaped like a person walking. It also didn't cast a shadow. That's what really horrified me. I could see the shadows of the parked cars moving along the buildings as I approached, but this thing didn't have its own shadow, and just fluidly moved through both my headlight beams and the shadows of the car without making its own. As I got near my spot, it passed in front of a parked van and didn't reappear on the other side. Obviously, due to the reasons for that shit, I posted about it on Facebook. The friend who had asked me about it earlier, someone dying there, sent me a message explaining that the reason she asked was because she felt a strong negative presence in the building, but didn't know if I was into that stuff, so she didn't know how to bring it up. I moved to a larger unit not long after that. Nothing odd happened in the building itself, but one night my boyfriend and I were walking our dogs 
and his started to freak out and refused to go behind our building. She always used the bathroom there, so we were pretty confused, but mine only used the bathroom at the dog park, so I told him I was going to head there. He meets me at the dog park and right off the bat, he's acting odd, like when someone wants to talk about something but doesn't know how. He kept making subtle hints that he wanted to go home, so I suggested we headed back. Back at the apartment, he acts oddly for a few more minutes, then finally breaks down and tells me that he feels like he needs to tell me something. He started off with, I didn't want to tell you because you're going to be here alone this weekend, but apparently a week or so prior, he was walking the dogs into the dog park at night and he heard someone softly but excitedly clapping while calling the dogs by name. Nobody in the complex knew their names and we didn't have patios, so there's no way a neighbor could have read their name tags. A friend of mine moved while I was in high school. His mom was selling their house, but he still had a key for a couple of months after they moved, and he stayed with me to finish the school year. So being a couple of teen boys, we used to hang out at his old house since he had a key. The house still had lights and running water, and a lot of the furniture was still there. It was a split-level house, with the living room and two bedrooms at the center going up to the kitchen level, then up to a few bedrooms and the only bathroom, important to note, He'd always said the house was haunted, but I never thought of it until one time we hung out there with two other friends. I was in the living room with the other two friends, and we decided it was a bit stuffy. So I got up to open the window, which had a crank to open it. I turned it for a bit to no avail, tried turning it the other way, and still nothing. By this point, all three of us were examining this window, trying to figure out if it was possibly locked and we heard a young voice right behind us state very clearly that one is broken, it doesn't open. Thinking it was our friend, I started to say, all right, thanks. As we all turned around, we heard the toilet flush, and about 15 seconds later, our friend came walking down the stairs to find the three of us standing around, staring wide-eyed towards where the voice had come from. Our friend's response to walking in on us in that state was simply, though, I see you guys met one of the residents. Another time, the two of us were hanging out at the same house and decided to play hacky sack in the basement. I kicked it wrong and it flew into a small side room I hadn't noticed before. Despite being in broad daylight and having lights on, the room was totally dark past the doorway. We both decided against going in after it and used a push broom to try and fish around for the hack but couldn't find it. I found a flashlight laying on a shelf and shined it in to look around. And even though the flashlight worked, it didn't illustrate that tint room at all. That freaked me out more than the voice by long shot. To set the stage, I lived in a rented home with my mother and brother. We had moved in about a month earlier, and all of us hadn't really enjoyed the transition from our last house. This house was always cold, and the water took a long time to get hot. The walls and floors creaked and the doors were difficult to open and close properly. I thought it was terrible, but I was only 10, so what the hell do I know, right? We first noticed that our living room furniture would sometimes be out of place, especially one of our love seats, for whatever reason. Sometimes in the morning or after we got back from the store or school, it would be moved a few feet away from the wall, making it immediately noticeable as we re-entered the house. Also, the blinds in the master bedroom would never stay the way you left them. If you closed them, when you got back they were open and vice versa. About a month into living there, the doorknob for the door that separated our living room from the entryway had the little tightening screw fall out, making it really easy to accidentally pull one side of the doorknob off as you're trying to open the door. The main event. A few days before, the entryway light bulb went out and needed to be replaced. But as it was about 10 feet into the air, my mother and brother didn't feel like replacing it, as they were both pretty busy most of the time. Now my friends and I loved hanging out in my living room on the weekends, as we would have the whole house to ourselves. So on this particular Saturday, we were sitting around my dining room table playing a game when all I heard the doorknob on the outside of the living room or entryway fall off and hit the floor. This had happened a couple of times at this point. So I wasn't initially scared in any way. 
I sigh and explain what the noise was to my friends as I walk across the living room and carefully open the entryway door. I go to turn on the light switch and remember that the bulb needs to be replaced. So I kneel down and start to feel around for the doorknob. I fumble around in the dark for a few minutes. At this point, I think that damn knob has rolled down the hall or something and I need a flashlight. So I get up and walk back into the living room, explaining to my friends what I'm doing and walk into the kitchen where the flashlight normally is. As I walk into the kitchen, the miscellaneous stuff drawer, the kind every kitchen has, is open and sitting next to the flashlight is the doorknob. To this day, I still get the tingling feeling down my spine as I write this. As I stare down at the drawer in disbelief, I notice I'm shaking and sweating uncontrollably. I'm barely able to stand as I stumble back into the living room, and with great difficulty, I explain to my friends what just happened. Needless to say, they all lost their collective shit, and we got the hell out of the house. A couple of months ago, I had the strangest dream ever. I was in the shotgun seat of a car driving through my neighborhood at night. The headlights were on, but they extended really short, and for some reason, to the sides of the car as well. There was a man driving, but it seemed too dark to see his face. The man just said, look, the pigs are dying. I looked out the window and saw some guy lying down, terrified and crying. I knew, I just knew, that his legs were being sliced open by a band saw. I looked around as we were driving, and there were more people being tortured like this. I asked the man over and over what was going on. All he said was, the pigs are dying. We pulled into the driveway of my house, and as we were slowing, the back camera display turned on for reversing in newer cars. Through the camera, I saw some kids tied together and bound to chairs crying. I asked the man if he had just run over those kids. He nodded and said, look, the pigs are dying. The worst part about this, I had gone with my family to Korea in the previous summer, and we had visited this place called Gyeonbokgung Palace. They have this museum where they show old Korean life, and my older brother and I saw something funny on the display and recorded it. Just the day after I had the dream, I was scrolling through my old photos and saw the video for the very first time after recording it. I opened it and watched it, but then I noticed something. The display was covering traditional Korean superstitions, and there was one in the corner that had gone unnoticed by me originally. If the pigs start killing themselves in your dream, bad things will happen.